Hi gang, Scott here. Today's video is about the parametric curve in Lightroom. This is actually the default mode of the curves tool. And I usually just skip right by it, but for whatever reason, it caught my attention. I think it's the new little squiggly logo kind of thing that showed up, oh, about a month ago in Lightroom uh, CC. And I just played around with it a little bit and realized I hadn't done a video on it. So I thought I'd do one, explain some of the controls. And if you're just starting to get familiar and comfortable with curves, it's a good place to start. It's a little more limiting than the freeform curve that we have uh, as well. It's a good starting point to get comfortable with what's going on. So uh, first, let me just show you like normally the curves like this, this gray button here doing this the tonal things we have a straight line and we can just start putting points on this curve and adjusting things all over the place and then pretty soon you know sometimes we get into this very odd looking state where if i really push say this really far we get this solarization and this is sometimes where people get fumbled around and you know twisted up with curves where like uh oh I, I don't I don't know what to do here anymore I've I ruined my life let me just go back to linear and I'm not going to play with curves again well this uh, one right here this parametric curve what happens is Lightroom takes the tone curve we have our pure black in the lower left corner and pure white in the upper right corner and this maps to our histogram right. A histogram, you know, if I hover over there, it says shadows, it says exposure. That's actually mapping to sliders that are in the basic tool. In the curves area, though, we have highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And as I hover over the different regions, you notice there's this overlay that kind of shows what would be adjusted. And your histogram is also here, right? I can see I have some pretty deep shadows. I get into the darks, then the lights, things are shifting over to the right, and finally up into the highlights. So if I want to adjust them, I can practice with the curve and I can pull my highlights down and we'll see that sky start to come back into play or I can push it and give it a, a glow. Uh, similar, uh, we could do something in the dark. So not the deep shadows, but just the dark areas and dim that down a little bit. If I were to do it in the dark areas, like the very deep shadows, like in the brush at the bottom and some of the hills there. But what the parametric curve is doing you can see the sliders are adjusting. I could do the same thing with the slider, right? And adjust the curve. But it's making sure that there's some sort of gentle, smooth curve that will keep your photo within reason looking good. It may not be exactly what you want if you get into advanced curves usage. When you're just getting started, it's quite handy. And one other thing that's really nice is the divisions where they've divided the histogram each going to four regions, you know, shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. You can change those. I can make the shadows very tight and the highlights very tight. So only this little tiny bit up here now is highlights. This area, I could say I want more to be considered a dark versus a light. And that changes what gets adjusted when I work with the curve. So this, this is darks slider because I've made this darks gap from here to here very wide. I've got a lot going on with the curve. If I were to tighten that up, same slider, the curve moves a lot less. So you do have a good amount of control over what regions of the tones in your photo you want to consider a shadow, a dark, a light, or a highlight. But you have the comfort of the parametric curve, making sure you don't overdo it. You can't put 10 different curve points in and make some crazy uh, transitions between two tones that are very close to one another. Really, it is a slider-based thing, but you have the option of taking a point on the curve and working with it. And I would advise if you're going to use curves, start to work with this curve here, the tone curve, as you're adjusting things, changing your points, because this will get you into the realm of being able to do something with your actual tone curve. And by the way, you can double up on this. I can have this be a curve here. I could also add, you know, a classic S curve here. And I'm you know, doubling the amount of contrast by laying on both of those curve controls. 
So uh, the parametric curve, it's a great way to get yourself introduced to curves if you're not comfortable with them. Try it out, and if you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.